Hey guys, welcome back. I'm just going to show you a quick video today on how to generate a quick time animated video out of each individual slides from a keynote file. So your keynote file will contain or should contain multiple uh, multiple of these presentations or slides and what you want to do is in essence only take one of these slides and export it into QuickTime and the reason you want to do that is perhaps and this is why I do it is I usually have a project for a video I have something in mind in this case uh, I have just shot the bratty diet video and I wanted to put a number of animated slides in there because I was only doing a voiceover. And so what I wanted to do was individually export each of these slides out to animate and then put it in various areas of my video. So the way you do that, and I'm not going to get into how to go ahead and artistically create everything. Um, basically, I'm using Keynote. Let's see about Keynote, Keynote 6.6.1 uh, and there shouldn't really be a difference in the various versions. You can download the latest Keynote if you want. I highly recommend it off of the um, Apple Store. It's just a great, great product and I think it's only $19.99 so it's well worth it if you are in the um, you know in the arena of doing uh, animated animations for your videos etc so basically uh, I created this one and I'm gonna go ahead and play you um, hopefully it'll only play this one slide but just so you get the the gist of it let's go ahead and play that and there it goes zooming in doing its thing okay and that that was basically the first slide so I'm gonna escape out of there and here's the second slide play that for you very quickly so I get my little hydration there jiggling and all the pretty pictures that come up for hydration okay so you get the gist of it so what you want to do is um, basically render these individually not as one whole file because if you play it if you go ahead and file export at this point and you export to QuickTime what it's going to do is export the entire file so it's going to play once you export it and save it as a QuickTime file it's going to play slide one and then slide two as one complete movie all right and you know you don't really want to do that so um the easy way around this is once you've created all your animation and and the things that you want to do is you want to go ahead and click on the slide or slides that you don't want okay and i usually just right mouse click you can also go ahead and I'll show you in a second where you can go but what you want to do is click on skip slide so go ahead and do that and as you can see it will hide it it, it actually kinda you can't see it anymore alright um, and then you will go ahead and click on the slide that you do want to render or export out and let me just see if uh, where the heck is it oh here it is under slide you can also go to skip slide uh, if you want to go ahead and um, you know do any of that you can also click back on there and don't skip slide if you do that it will put it back so just a quick you know tip either way you can go through the slide menu or you can do a right mouse click I usually do the right mouse click and again skip slide and then you want to make sure that you are on the slide that you want to export sorry I've got this cat running around me and if you hear any meowing that's that so flame is being annoying again as usual anyway okay so you take this you go file export to QuickTime.
Okay, you want to go ahead and have self playing as your playback mode, and then go ahead and put all of the next slide and the next build to zero seconds. That is crucial so that it goes ahead and understands that it's going to pop up and it's going to start playing immediately. It's not waiting for any other build or anything else to happen. I usually leave it at 740p. That's enough for my videos. Um, on YouTube, you might want to go 1080 or choose a custom uh, you know, format for your uh, pixels, depending on what your output is for different ones. And it'll kind of tell you down here that 1080 is best for iPad or Retina Display or Apple TV. If you go back to 720, it'll tell you it's good for the iPad, iPad Mini, blah, blah, blah. So it will kind of give you a hint on what you should be rendering to. But go ahead and click Next. Okay, and I am just going to name this Test Slide 2. Let's just do that, okay? We'll just export that out. And it shouldn't take it long. It, it, it's only one slide, basically a couple of seconds. Okay, and it's done. So now we've got to go find it. I've got my videos up here, so hopefully it'll be at the top. There it goes. Test slide two. And we will play that. And I just uh, play it on a regular thing. There it goes. So here's the MPEG stream, and then you just click play. And there it goes jiggling. There's the pretty pictures. And that's all there is to it. And like you saw on this one, it did not have the first slide coming up at all. So all it rendered was that second slide. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, I just discovered this, kind of tripped over it as I was making my other videos because, like I said, I was uh, putting in a project and I didn't want to go render everything out or have to slice it. Um, you know, it's a pain in the butt if you're going to be... Uh, making an entire uh, QuickTime video out of this and then bringing it into your video program and then you have to run the whole thing and then you have to kind of cut and slice and slice and dice to make the various um, the various videos and then put them in the places that you want. So why go ahead and do all that when you can just basically have it done for you. So thank you for watching. Please thumbs up this video if you like it and uh, please subscribe to me and I will catch you guys later. Bye bye.